This is ESPN, the Total Sports Network. from Mountain Bike Central in Marin County, California, here's Greg Lewis. Hello and welcome to another week of action in the Mountain Bike World Cup. This season-long competition is in its first year and with over half the season completed, the battle for the overall title is fierce. Now last week, the circuit made its first U.S. appearance in Traverse City, Michigan, and the Americans swept the victories. But if the Americans are going to have a chance to capture the World Cup overall, they must dominate the two remaining U.S. events. And if there is any mountain bike event that is quintessentially American, it is the epic course traced on the barren slopes of Mammoth Lakes, California. Tim Blumenthal, the mountain bike editor of Bicycling Magazine, is standing by in the majesty of the Eastern Sierra. And Tim, the event that preceded this one was in Michigan. Now we're in California. Can you compare the two courses at all? They're very different, Greg. Traverse City, Michigan was hot and it was sandy. Mammoth Mountain is high. We're above 8,000 feet here, and that should favor the Americans, the Americans who train at altitude, the Americans who live at altitude, the Americans who have been here for several weeks getting ready for this key stop on the World Cup. Well, that's a good point, Tim, but let's talk a little bit more about the Americans being favored here, because although this is a sport that was invented in the United States, in the men's overall standings right now, an Austrian is leading, an Austrian with a hard-to-pronounce name of Gerhard Zadrobelek. Now, he's elected not to come here, which is permissible in the rules, but who are some of the riders who might be able to take advantage of his absence? Well, three riders come to mind. Rishi Graywall, an American, Ned Overend, another American, and Dave Weens, also of the United States. They, all three of them, have excellent records here in the past, and they'll be looking to gain points on the Austrian. Okay, is there a single rider who could actually overtake Zadrobelek in this race? The rider with the best chance of moving into the World Cup lead is Rishi Graywall. If he finishes in the top 10 today, which seems quite likely, he'll move into the World Cup lead. Okay, let's move on to the women's competition now, because in that field, it's really a horse race. First place is the American, Julie Furtado. In second is the German, Regina Stiefel. And in third place is Sarah Ballantyne of the United States. Only four points separate those three riders in the overall standings. Is this an event that could be a watershed for this season-long competition? Well, it should be, and it should favor the two Americans. Julie Furtado has been virtually unbeatable this season, and Sarah Ballantyne, although she hasn't had quite the year that she's had in the past, she's been coming on strong, and she has an excellent record here at Mammoth. I think the German, Stiefel, she's going to have a tough time coming from sea level to race here at 8,000 feet. That's tough. Okay, well, we'll be back with the start of the women's event right after this. Stay with us. The Mountain Bike World Cup is brought to you by Grundig Electronics. Grundig, a proud sponsor of the Mountain Bike World Cup. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Three truths in cycling. You're only as good as your equipment. No matter what, there is always a headwind. And finally, there is never enough time to ride. of courage when the undefeated champion Ray Mercer takes on the undefeated courageous Tommy Morrison for the WBO heavyweight title. See it live October 18th on Pay Per View. Brought to you by TVKO and Budweiser. The undefeated, undisputed king of beers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Go on, Oscar. Outside. Go on, boy. Oh, look, a tennis ball. Look at that, buddy. Hey, hey, get the paper, boy. Go on. 
Oscar, outside. Out! From the world's first air conditioning to the world's most energy-efficient furnace, Carrier makes it better inside. Go get Teddy! Oscar. Why don't you just get the leash, Frank? Me? I'm not going out. Carrier makes it better inside. We're the inside guys. Call us. These people never thought of themselves as high-pressure salespeople. They've always been committed to service. That's why they've become successful Better Homes and Gardens real estate agents and why they use our proven real estate marketing systems to serve their customers better than anybody. After all, we've found that once you place service above everything, everything else falls into place. For information about a career in real estate, call 1-800-ADVANCE or your local Better Homes and Gardens real estate firm. The World Cup leader, Julie Furtado of the USA, getting set to handle the 26 miles here at Mammoth. There's one of the few Europeans to show up. In second place, it's Regina Stiefel. Europeans intimidated by the altitude. In third, Sarah Ballantyne, the veteran, and she likes this course. Another USA rider. Julie Furtado's wearing blue. She's the World Cup leader, but she could be wearing white as the Norva points leader, or yellow for her Team Yeti, or even rainbow as the defending world champion. Regina Stiefel, not in blue. She was before this event. She'd like to get that blue jersey back. And there's Furtado changing. She's changing to the white jersey. This makes me think of a NASCAR driver who wins the race and then puts on one hat after another to satisfy all their sponsors. Furtado out in front, but look at the battle for first place. Again, only four points separating the top three. This is a critical event in the women's overall World Cup and a critical start because this course narrows to single track quickly and there's julie Furtado, number 244 in yellow with a quick start as always and trouble in the back Furtado, valentine and regina stiefel right up front on this course it's a 13 mile loop only two laps 26 miles total and the challenge here is a long climb that rises to 9,800 feet and that's good for Sarah Ballantyne and Ruthie Mathis, two of the best climbers. In fact, Mathis, who you just saw in blue going into the woods, won the hill climb here at Mammoth a few days earlier. And for Tato, having some difficulty with the climb, she's in fourth now. She can't afford to stay there. Look at the point standings for this race. 16 for first, 13 second, 11 third, 9 fourth. That would drop her out of first place. She's got to be right up there in the top three to remain in contention. This is Mathis' first start in a World Cup this year, and it's not that surprising to see her in the lead because she's a great climber on or off-road. Mathis from Boulder, Colorado, perhaps a little bit more used to the altitude. Sarah Ballantyne loves Mammoth. She's won here three times in the past, but this year, Tim, a different course. It's a different course, and it's also a very smooth course. We've had heavy rain in this part of California throughout June. It's, it's a smooth track, and it favors anybody who can just climb. Regina Stiefel has dropped back to an uncustomary position, seventh place, but look who's behind her. It's Julie Furtado, and she is really struggling today. It's very surprising to see Furtado back this far. I think I'm more nervous about this race than I've ever been because Ruthie Mathis is climbing spectacularly, and I've had problems with the altitude, which I usually don't have. 9,800 reasons to be nervous as Ruthie Mathis approaches the summit. 1,000 feet of climbing in each of two laps on this race course, and Mathis has got it under control the first lap. She stunned the cycling world by winning the silver in the World Road Championship last year and the bronze in the Mountain Bike World Championships. So she's done it before. On the flat, Mathis still leading, but Ballantyne is maintaining contact. She's not letting her get out of sight. They're one and two. But the same can't be said for Julie Furtado. She's way back, struggling through the corners. On the technical single track to the finish, Ballantyne shows her skill, and she takes the lead. One lap remains. Ballantyne's lead, though more symbolic than significant, it is Ruthie Mathis only nine seconds behind, and she has the willpower to pull back into the lead. But Julie Furtado has fallen far back, and now the question is, does she have the mental strength to battle from this position. Mathis attacking against Ballantyne. It's a replay of the first lap. Up the hill, and Mathis is in control of the race once again. Can she put enough distance in front of Ballantyne to hold on in the technical descent? For Tato, 
through the start finish area. She's still trying. She's still showing the good bike handling skills. What? She stopped. And that's her team director, John Parker, changing jerseys. Ruthie Mathis, meanwhile, has none of these problems. She's just got her mind focused on putting as much distance in front of Sarah Ballantyne as she possibly can. And she's going to need to do it on the uphill Come because on, once they get over the top, Ballantyne will have the advantage on the technical rock-strewn descent. Ballantyne needs to keep the gap manageable, and that means 10, 15, 20 seconds as they approach the top. And it's been at least 20 seconds that Julie Furtado has lost here, as she's now back in the World Cup leader's jersey. And she does not look happy about this political business that has interrupted her race plan. Well, Mathis has managed to keep her lead as they get onto this technical twisting single track. Furtado still trying, but trailing. Do I have legs on my body right now? What? A little gallows humor from Julie Furtado, but it tells you that the spirit is still there, even if the energy isn't. That's good. I don't like being far behind. Um, I don't mind it so much anymore because I know I can win, and I think I know I can come from behind. So maybe I won't so start so fast this time. But I get discouraged when I'm not, you know, up near the lead. For Furtado, the mind game is big a problem as the altitude. And that says it all. Today's not my day. Mathis still leading. And she's not that comfortable in water. She has to get off her bike, push it up the hill. Technical skills, the liability for her. Valentine. Yes, she just grinds it out, maintains her rhythm, and is closing on Ruthie Mathis. Mathis' fiance, David Farmer, road racer for Coors Light, he's been helping her with her game plan. Put the big old fat tires on every descending advantage she could find. We knew if she could get up the hill, she just had to come down. And so she comes down and around towards the finish, her first World Cup of the season and victory. Ruthie Mathis, a big upset here at Mammoth Mountain. A decisive win, but where are Ballantyne and Furtado? Meet another satisfied customer from Wendell Ford Nissan Isuzu. The people were really nice. They were really helpful. Um, they took me and showed me all the cars upstairs, and I wanted white, and so he said that we might have one, so we went clear upstairs, and he helped me find the car I wanted, and just was really helpful. The receptionist was helpful. It was real nice. Wendell's a good place to buy a car, and I'd recommend people to go down there. They're really helpful. They help you with your payments, and they check back, and they seem like they really care. Wendell Ford Nissan Isuzu. Hi. If you have HBO, these are just some of the things you've recently seen. Exactly. But if you didn't have Showtime, these are just some of the things you recently missed. Look. The HBO Showtime Combo. Different movies. Different specials. Twice, twice the, the choice. choice. It's all on cable. Cox Cable. Talk. It's Houston quarterback Warren Moon. Join in and call in Monday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time here on ESPN. Brace yourself. For the mountain fresh scent of mountain fresh style. A mammoth celebration begins for Ruthie Mathis, victorious in this World Cup event. Sarah Ballantyne, a big 44 seconds behind. Tim is with Ruth Mathis, our winner. David tells me that you've done about 10 mountain bike rides total this year. Um, well, yeah, total, but this is like my third race. So on my second cross country race, so I'm really pleased with how I rode today. Um, the single track was pretty exciting for me, but, um, but I like the climbing. The climbing pays off with a 44-second win. Mathis first, Ballantyne second. Look at this. The top four places swept by the USA. The American World Cup working their way. Congratulations here to Sarah Ballantyne from Julie Furtado's coach. Ballantyne in second place in this Mammoth World Cup. And the overall standings, Sarah Ballantyne moves him to first. Furtado falls to second. More Americans showing now near the top of the standings. Tim Davies.
The men get set for their run at the Mammoth course. Rishi Graywall, hot off a win in Traverse City, set to go, loosening up. This is John Tomac making his first appearance in the Mountain Bike World Cup. He's been in Europe racing on the road. And Ned Overend trying to redeem himself after a disappointing performance in Traverse City. Tinker Juarez, he did very well in Traverse City and he's now home in California. Risha Graywall and David Weens talk over strategy. Here's the standings in the season right now. Gerhard Zadrobelek of Austria is the leader, but he's elected not to come to this event. Nine events in the overall World Cup. Competitors only have to compete in five. So he has dropped this one, and it puts his lead in jeopardy as we get underway with Rishi Graywall in the white shirt, and he just sprints out here. This course narrows to single track. You want to be near the front. That's Graywall style. He always goes out fast. He wants to make everyone else chase him. Mammoth's course is famous for mountain biking, but it's one of the least technically demanding courses on this World Cup circuit. John Tomac takes the lead on the climb and a very different kind of surface than we've seen in the past at Mammoth. It almost seems like a road race, Greg. It's almost like pavement. So much rain in the spring, so much snow in April has dried this course out. And you can see, look in the arms, in the biceps. They're not shaking that much. This is a very smooth track, very much to Tomac's liking. The Tomac out in front, the one-time BMX rider. It's Tinker Juarez in second. And following them in third is David Weens. And now some vibration in his arms. David Weens is fairly tall and fairly stout for a mountain bike racer, and yet he's an excellent climber. He proved that last year. He won two races in the National Series. From the 9,800-foot summit, now the descent, and Tomac should shine here. He's out in front, known as the best technical rider in the business. And, and Tomac is flamboyant. You can see it. He gets a little, little bit of air off the turves here. He's the master of the downhill, leaving everybody in his dust. Stretching it out over Tinker Juarez and David Weens, who now sneaks to the inside and takes second position. But Tomac is leaving them all behind as he makes this hairpin turn, coming back to the start-finish line. For the last few years, Tomac's divided his time between road racing and mountain biking. Now he's back, making more of a commitment to the off-road sport, and right now he's showing everybody that he's ready. Ned Overend has moved up to third, showing better form than he did in Traverse City. You can see how easily Tomac rides through that technical section. John Tomac, only 23 years old, but he's been a big name in international racing for four or five years. Tomac in the lead with 26 miles to go. Brace yourself. for the mountain fresh scent of mountain fresh dial. Wow. Today, Tectred Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, Mission Savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. The perfect game. The perfect shot. The perfect body. The perfect place. ESPN. Wednesday night. Greg Lewis and Tim Blumenthal back in Mammoth Mountain, California. More World Cup mountain bike racing. When we finished the first lap, it was Tomac out in front. But now as they make the climb through the second lap, it's David Weens who has the lead over John Tomac. Well, David Weens comes from altitude in Colorado. And here at high altitude in California, he's doing very well. In third place, Tinker Juarez, Daryl Price on the left from Specialized in fourth. They're climbing comfortably together. Still not out of it with more than 20 miles to go. Tinker Juarez from East LA, a five foot nine, 145 pound racer. Is that a good size for mountain bike? He's actually pretty light, just like Rishi Graywall, who is leading Tom Rogers of the GT team there in about fifth position. 
Risha Graywall, of course, the winner in the event preceding this. David Weens is now stretching out his lead over John Tomac. Weens has a history of good results here at Mammoth, but he's never won. Tomac, he's come back from Europe to race in mountain biking, making his first World Cup start in several months here at Mammoth. And he seems to be laboring a bit. Perhaps it's the travel. Perhaps it's the ordeal of racing on the road and then making this abrupt transition to the high Sierra. John Tomac, though, the man of skill and another who's used to the altitude. He's out of Colorado. David Weens, look at him just muscle up this slope. 9,800 feet at the summit. There's about 1,000 feet of climbing in each lap. And Weens looks terrific. Meanwhile, Graywall doesn't. He lives high in the mountains of Colorado, so he should be at home here in Mammoth. But he's suffering. And he was the winner last week. Now he's going to have a hard time keeping the lead in the World Cup Series. Graywall here in Mammoth, 88, 89, and 90. The Norba events, a silver medalist in the finals. David Weens, though, looking for gold as he cruises down. This is a place where Tomac could perhaps close a little bit with his excellent skills, but Weens is giving him nothing. Net over end in fourth, a winner two out of the last three years here. He could be in contention for a victory if he hadn't had a chain problem a little earlier that dropped him back. He is a man who likes to be out front, enjoyed his greatest triumph in the World Mountain Biking Championships in Durango one year ago. He is the reigning superstar in the sport. Back to the broad slopes of Mammoth Mountain, and that's John Tomac still in second place. The advantage of the wide open terrain is that he can see David Weens ahead. It's Rishi Guerrero behind, still struggling, his mouth hanging. Tinkerara is just behind. This doesn't seem like it's Rishi Graywall's day. Tomac now making use of his skills. Powerful rider. Seems more comfortable on the course. But he has still a long way to go to catch the leader, David Weens. Look at the stylish turn there. Weens calls himself a lunch pail rider. He's not much on the way of flash. Tomac always looks like he's going a million miles an hour. But appearances can be deceiving. Ned Overend still trying to pull himself into contention. Tomac, full of style, really always leaning forward, trying to eke every second out of the course. That was a very nice turn. But our nifty turn's going to catch David Weens. His motto, I just work hard. And he's working hard here on the flat. The 26-year-old rider from Gunnison, Colorado. And he looks full of conviction to hold off John Tomac. Here's Ned Overend, and he has a lot of trouble comparatively around the turn. And look who's really struggling, Rishi Graywall. That's really uncharacteristic. Tinker Juarez, a little bit smoother, but these two are well behind. Coming into the start-finish line, one more lap to go. David Weens leads, 13 miles stretch ahead. Can he keep John Tomac behind? Weens position represented by the right-hand edge of the pink bar. Tomac, the left-hand edge. And then in third is Ned Overend. You can see that he is, well, more than twice as far back. So Overend has quite a bit of work cut out for him. Too bad he had the problem with his chain. He might be closer. And, and David Weens approaching the top of the hill in the last lap, still looking very strong. Smooth pumping in the legs, plenty in reserve, or at least so it appears. Weens is uh, known as a good climber. Tomac now looks a little hunkered over and not as strong as he did in earlier climbs. I think he's doing this on grit. He's not having a particularly good day, but this is his first World Cup start, and he needs to get points. David Weens cheered on by the crowd. It's all reinforcement for his effort here. A steady, steady ride. I'm hoping to win today. You know, I'm going to go out and try to win the race. And uh, I've had, like you say, I've had some success at Mammoth. I like the course. I like the altitude. Uh, it's a good length. It's a little bit longer race. There's quite a bit of climbing in it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm confident going in that I could have a good race and, uh, and possibly win. And so a Colorado boy is making good in California through the tall trees, catching some lapped riders. And Rishi Graywall, another Colorado boy, no chance of a win here for him in California. And he's got to try to stay up close to the leaders to protect his position in the overall on, World Cup standings where he's second Ned. right now. On, Ned, Ned Overend still gaining. Overend has a history of success here. 
But today, history and success belong to David Weens. The second World Cup event in the U.S., and Weens is the victor. What a champion. 236-36. a stump jumper and it's the world's most popular mountain bike but then who says you need a mountain to ride one go on oscar outside go on boy oh look a tennis ball look at that buddy hey hey get the paper boy go on oscar outside out from the world's first air conditioning to the world's most energy efficient furnace carrier makes it better inside go get teddy oscar why don't you just get the leash frank me i'm not going out carrier makes it better inside we're the inside guys call us rick meyer and notre dame's fighting irish are on a mission they're out to stop the dominant ground attack of air force and indiana faces michigan live college football saturday on espn The Mountain Bike World Cup has been brought to you by NORBA, the National Off-Road Bicycle Association, the governing body of mountain biking. And by Mountain Fresh Dial, the refreshing deodorant soap. David Weens, victorious in the World Cup at Mammoth Mountain. And in second place, John Tomac. He missed Traverse City. He was racing on the road in Europe. He comes back to the mountains in good form, picking up 23 points. Now at the finish line, it's our Tim Blumenthal with David Weens. Let's go to Tim. I was, you know, feeling like I could ride fast today. If, you know, it all worked out, you just don't know. There's so many fast guys. It, and this year, my start was better. The last couple years, I either had to work up from the back or, like, last year, I died at first, and I was way back, and then I had to, you know, come back. So this year, it was neat to stay up front, and then I just, you know, rode my race. I didn't attack. I just rode the way I felt like I could ride and ended up working out. Mountain bike racing's tortoise and the hare, but all USA riders in the top five positions and a critical fifth place for Rishi Graywall, the top European in 12th. Rishi Graywall. And so for Graywall, a long, hard day of suffering, but a day that's going to reap great reward. He moves into the overall lead in the World Cup Series, 90 points. Zdrobelec of Austria didn't compete, falls to second. David Weens, the winner, moves up to fifth. Well, Tim Blumenthal, we spoke to a lot of people before this race in Mammoth Lakes, and we didn't hear the name David Weens on many lips as a possible winner. This must be a terrific surprise. It is a big surprise, though Weens told us that his training has been going very well and that he expected to do very, very well here today. He's finished third and fourth in past years at Mammoth. He's not the best-known name. He's not in the Ned Overend, Risha Graywall class, but he was unbeatable today. Tomac said he tried to catch him on the last lap, and there was absolutely no way. A great ride for David Weens. Definitely a great ride. Now, you mentioned Rishi Graywall. He has taken the lead in the overall standings of this World Cup. However, the race was somewhat of a disappointment for him. How does one explain that exactly? Well, you, all racers have on days and off days, and whether it's physiological or psychological, it's hard to say. Rishi described it as a one-gear day where he really didn't feel any pep. He wasn't able to accelerate, wasn't able to chase to improve his position. But he remained solid throughout the whole day. He got the placing that he needed to move into the World Cup lead. He has to be satisfied. Well, thank you, Tim. Remember, next week, the Mountain Bike World Cup returns to ESPN with the action from Park City, Utah the last American stop on the Mountain Bike World Cup before the circuit returns to Europe. That's coming up next Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. For Tim Blumenthal, I'm Greg Lewis. So long for now.